Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good evening. I think we have a uh, essentially a worldwide uh, audience here. Uh, so um, thank you for joining our uh, joint seminar with uh, ServiceNow and DX Sherpa. Uh, we're going to discuss digital transformation or AITSM, which we will talk a little bit about further as far as what that is uh, in a post-pandemic world with ServiceNow. So a few things uh, that I want to uh, go through as we uh, continue down here, um, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, all participants are gonna be muted, um, but we will uh, leverage the chat window or Q&A window. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to submit those questions. And uh, at the end of the, the presentation, we will attempt to address as many of those questions as we can. We may not be able to get to all of them, but if not, uh, you know, we will absolutely get back to you uh, if you have a specific question. And in addition to that, uh, after the webinar, if you have any additional questions as you go through, uh, you can absolutely uh, email us at info.dxsherpa.com or you can go to our website at www dxsherpa.com. So quick introduction uh, as far as who we are, DX Sherpa. Uh, we are a premier ServiceNow partner. Uh, we have a team of about 270 uh, consultants that uh, are uh, we're, we're growing exponentially. Uh, we have an expanding client base across multiple disciplines of the ServiceNow platform. So these consultants are, uh, many of them are licensed in various aspects of the ServiceNow platform. So we have, uh, like I say, a very large slice of uh, certified and licensed um, uh, client or consultants that, that can, uh, can work with you. Um, so a little bit about our solutions and what we offer. Uh, we offer consulting, process mode, uh, process road mapping, uh, we are a licensed reseller, so we can do license provisioning around the ServiceNow platform. Uh, we do implementation integrations and support, uh, also things like upgrades. Uh, we can also provide staff augmentation services. We see a lot of clients that may have a need for a specific discipline. Uh, we can come in and help provide uh, a person from a staff augmentation aspect of things. And in addition to that, we provide managed services. So uh, once again, if you need uh, somebody to come in and manage your ServiceNow environment, we have the ability and we have the skill sets to, to do that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we do focus heavily around automation. Uh, so anything around the ServiceNow platform, right? we can work with you to focus around automating those processes. As I said, we are 100%, uh, we're a premier partner, we're 100% ServiceNow focused. Uh, we, service, we serve a wide range of enterprises, medium to large enterprises. Uh, we have a presence across Asia, Europe, North America. So we serve many uh, continents across the globe. We are a global uh, service provider. And uh, once again, our expertise, we focus a lot on manufacturing, banking, insurance, IT, and healthcare. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Greg Specht. I will be uh, uh, speaking further later on in, uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, I am the Senior Director of Sales for the U.S. in Canada. Um, I was formerly a ServiceNow employee. Um, I've got about 30 years of uh, experience within the IT industry. Um, so once again, um, you know, I'm, I'm, my focus now is, is solely on driving the sales or, uh, within the US and Canada regions. Our next speaker, and I will just quickly, uh, Damian Davis, I will turn it over to him and Davey, Damian will be uh, uh, talking through um, the next several slides within this presentation. But Damien, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you introduce yourself. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, my name's Damien Davis. And from my accent, you may be able to tell I'm based out of England in the UK. 
Um, I'm the global director of our product management organization for one of our business units here at ServiceNow. So I look after IT service management. But of course, you know, our customers don't think about business units like we do internally. So we're focused on what we call the technology service operations wider play here. And this is all about bringing IT service management and IT operations management together on the ServiceNow platform to deliver technology excellence. Um, I've been working at ServiceNow for just over 10 years, and I'm delighted to partner with Greg and the DX Sherpa team on this webinar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through the next few slides and we're going to talk about how we can help support digital transformation in this, hopefully, I should have put it in parenthesis, right, a post-pandemic world. And that's my vision. I'm an optimist um, and, and I'm optimistic that we are at the tail end of this pandemic. Um, so in the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to walk you through what we're hearing from our customers and how that dictates the, the market landscape. And then I'll walk you through a couple of use cases because you know, when we're positioning ServiceNow, um, even though I'm a product manager, we shouldn't really be focused on point solutions and products. We should really be looking at how we can deliver outcomes and, and solving the market problems. Um, I'm just going to pull up a one single slide on customer case studies showing where customers have already got great value out of deploying some of the capabilities I'm going to walk you through. And then I'm going to wrap up by talking about some of the highlights of these capabilities and the problems they solve in our latest release, the San Diego release. And then we'll wrap up. And although I've put questions there, obviously you can field your questions through the, the chat panel in the webinar um, during that. I'm gonna hand back to Greg, and Greg's gonna walk us through a bit more detail of, of a customer use case. So let's kick things off, Greg. What are we hearing from our customers, the market landscape? So if we flick through to the next slide, and I look deeper into just one example of where accelerating digital transformation may be affecting your business and it risks exploding the complexity of people processes and technology and we've hit, heard it loud and clear it's important for you to have visibility across employee experiences to improve resolution times predict and prevent issues and increase speed and agility this is why we're partnering with the Sherpa because these guys specialize in maximizing those automation capabilities. And there are common things that are holding most teams back. Employee expectations for how and where they work have changed. Um, the shift has made it increasingly difficult for organizations, look at this graphic here, to support new flexible work experiences, providing streamlined services to support their employees' need with disconnected systems and departments, you know, and as a result, keeping employees engaged and productive has never been more challenging. And if you look at this visual here, right, across the whole IT value delivery chain, you know, it's got this whole rat's nest of technology products and solutions trying to support a digital business. And these legacy solutions and point tools can cause IT to be made up of disjointed and fragmented, you know, working environments. And that makes it difficult to support the changing workplace efficiently and effectively. These point products add up to complexity, higher costs, and what we see is a limited ability for IT to deliver modern service experience because they're spending too much time firefighting instead of delivering services. And the result ultimately drives up costs, lowers productivity, and it just consumes valuable IT resources by keeping the lights on. So if we jump forward a slide, you know, with ServiceNow, our vision, partnering with DX Sherpa, is how organizations can jumpstart their digital transformation by moving IT service management and IT operations management to the cloud. ServiceNow's non-stop cloud with the Now platform, we removed the burden of managing on-premise hardware, software, and all of those brittle integrations stitching everything together. And the Now platform is that single system of action to help organizations drive innovation, improve productivity for IT and employees, at the same time eliminating those costly legacy tools and infrastructure means we can create a resilient service experience that fits the world your employees work in today. So I wanna talk about the use cases that we're solving, these technology service operation use cases. And the next slide, we've got 10 use cases here this is based on feedback we've heard from customers, and you'll see them in three pillars. And customers 
want to um, bring technology service and operations together around modernizing, automating, and optimizing these operations. We do it using our single cloud platform, as I mentioned. It's market leading baseline IT processes by methodology like ITIL. Think about incident problem and change, and we can bring them together with a CMDB tied closely with all of the capabilities like discovery, business service mapping. And this solution also supports DevOps teams by increasing change throughput while minimizing risk and overhead using AI-based change policies. And I can't, we don't have time to run through every one of these use cases. So Greg's very kindly highlighted two that I'd like to talk through in a little bit more detail because use case one is delivering an AI-powered employee experience and use case two is about improving staff productivity on the back end. So if we drill into the first use case, delivering an AI powered employee experience, the journey, excuse me, the journey for many of our customers, if you click through please, Greg, starts with an end result in mind to deliver profoundly great technology experience to their employees. And that's not just what happens in the user interface, it means quick responses with the ability for employees to access and make requests across all of technology services, anywhere, anytime, and on any device, right? Everyone has a smartphone. Um, and it could be a request for a new computer, maybe a password reset, or even some time on the Amazon cloud. And with the help of AI, employees now have that ability to get 24 seven self-service for faster answers and resolutions. And great experiences also means IT employees can provide you know, uh, information to these employees. Now, the way that our solution helps achieve this is with a number of ways. You can see there, 24-7 AI-powered service, a virtual agent, a chatbot with NLU, natural language understanding, that is automating a conversation that manages common requests, providing better, anytime, anywhere access to self-service, deflecting the noise from IT staff to reduce call volumes and free them up to do more meaningful work. And when you look at simplifying technology requests there in the middle pillar, embedded experiences like Employee Center, it provides a single place to ask for service and support from HR, IT and other departments. And then you've got a service catalog where we can deliver products and services for a, a user-friendly interface like an Amazon catalog that empowers employees. And on the right there, getting faster resolutions using technology like predictive intelligence, which is ServiceNow's native automation machine learning capability, we can use AI to deliver natural language recommendations to resolve issues, automatically route and categorize tickets with a degree of efficiency and accuracy that is not possible with human agents. Throw in dynamic translation, you can translate text from employees no matter what country they're in. It means that you can even understand me in English um, with my English accent. Um, so look, there's some outcomes there at the bottom there. There's some great case studies. We've got the, the driver and vehicle standard agency and the Italian coffee giants, Lavazza. These case studies are available on the ServiceNow website. And again, talk to your DX Sherpa representative to get a hold of these white papers. It shows you where the DVSA were able to deflect 55% of all of their service interactions in the first month of deploying virtual agent. And Lavaza, who by the way, make excellent coffee, they are able to now manage 70,000 tickets a year with, um, with their ITSM solution, but the power of the platform means they can also use what we now call strategic portfolio management, harnessing the power of having that one platform, one data model, one shared set of intelligence, means they can manage requests, projects efficiently, and ensuring effective governance and strict control of all of their economic resources. So that's one use case solving for employee experience. The next use case on the next slide shows how we can solve for the agents that are providing those IT services. So how can we anticipate trends and improve staff productivity? Now we know that while we wanna make a great self-service experience, not everything can be managed by self-service. We still need agents. And some companies have the vision of zero touch, zero incidents. I am an optimist, but I still think we're a way away from that. So meanwhile, how can we deliver a great experience for those agents? And these agents, the IT teams, they are critical to the functioning of the business. It is important that we maximize their productivity. You know, I could ask you, 
How do you view staff productivity? Do you see headroom for growth? The truth is a lot of organizations are struggling despite having competent teams because they lack the relevant analytics and automation that help them prioritize work and optimize staff productivity. Well, guess what? ServiceNow combined with DX Sherpa, we can partner together to help you solve that problem using built-in analytics, machine learning, and capabilities that catapult agent productivity to new highs, you can forecast trends and boost staff productivity. If I go from left to right, our built-in machine learning, predictive intelligence, this routes and categorizes all the incidents and requests to the right resolution team. And it means the service desk agents can resolve incidents in a purpose-built workspace. We call it agent workspace. We're actually about to launch a new service operations workspace that brings the agent workspace combined with the operator workspace into one unified um, experience and new user interface. Now the analytics is built into the platform so the services team can forecast work and prioritize accordingly. So that's predictive intelligence and agent workspace. And in the middle, mobile agent makes it easier for agents to triage, act on and resolve requests on the go. And of course, virtual agent with natural language understanding is automating those common requests away providing that better anytime, anywhere access to self-service, it frees up those agents to focus on higher value, more meaningful work. And in terms of the final pillar there, maximizing automation and, and self-service, we've got performance analytics. It's the lifeblood and the heartbeat of the ServiceNow platform, providing that analytics to improve overall service experiences. And benchmarks allows you to compare all of your SLAs and KPIs and performance to industry peers and help you achieve desired results with recommendations. And again, two more customer examples here. We've got an insurance company in Germany, Gothar. They dramatically sped up their release cycle using IT service management with IT asset management to manage multiple operating and service processes in a coherent way. And anyone in technology has almost certainly heard of the global giant Accenture. Their headquarters is in Dublin, Ireland. They have 624,000 employees. 75% of their workforce are using ServiceNow every day. They had 15 legacy support portals they consolidated onto one platform, one unified um, service portal for every request, HR, finance, IT, on a single portal powered by the Now platform. And the case studies, again, are on the ServiceNow website. So, now I'd like to, I've walked you through those um, two use cases. I'd just like to flag up some customer case studies. So the next slide just has a few logos and a few metrics on there. Again, all of these are backed up by a case study on the ServiceNow website. So we haven't just pulled these figures out of the sky. Let me just go to a couple of examples there. MGM, if, if you don't like betting poker chips, then maybe that's not the best example, but the giants at MGM, they deployed virtual agent to increase their agent productivity, they were able to double down on their investment because when they deployed virtual agent, their agent productivity increased by 100%, the 2x. And that was by deflecting those common, high frequency, low priority requests through that chatbot, building out virtual agent conversations that meant that all of the regular requests that were coming into IT, um, like common requests, even simple statements like, I want to contact IT, what's the status of my ticket? Virtual agent can answer that immediately and it can deliver those results straight off the bat. Um, other examples there, all of these, like I say, are on the, on the ServiceNow website. I won't drill into these because Greg's got a great use case and case study to walk you through when I've finished. So I'm going to move on to talk to you about our San Diego release. Now I'm hoping that by now you are familiar with the release cycle of ServiceNow, we, we name our releases after major cities. So at the moment it's the Rome release, San Diego is going live now, um, and then later this year we'll have Tokyo, and next year we'll see Utah. They go alphabetically in order, named after major cities twice a year. Now the beauty of ServiceNow San Diego release is we've got this whole new next generation experience. It is a complete reimagined look and feel with unified navigation, and it's gonna drive workforce productivity with purpose-built workspaces. So on the next slide, what we're launching is a brand new workspace called Service Operations Workspace. And, it, and we're gonna deliver this via the ServiceNow store um, in conjunction with the San Diego release timeframe. And our goal with this is to build and bring together 
IT service management and IT operations management, all of those capabilities into a single workspace. So on the back end, if you're interested, our designers, our engineers, and our developers had to rebuild the workflows and make sure we took a look at all of these to make sure all the interactions are meaningful. Um, it, bring in um, service owner workspace, agent workspace, operator workspace, all together. I see Greg's already kindly moved on to digital portfolio management. I, I, I get the impression he's pushing me along here. He's got a big smile. So look, service operations workspace is gonna land soon. Also, digital portfolio management. Now, what we've found is there is almost always an overlap between service ownership and application ownership, but that quite often there's no central place to view and collectively manage it. So what we've produced here is a solution that gives an end-to-end -end view of all service offerings into a single UI with a complete picture of planned work around an offering, what's in flight, currently being worked on, how it's performing, is it performing as designed? And it reduces that manual overhead that our customers are telling us that they're currently doing to take data from disparate sources and create a comprehensive view of their service and application offerings. It, obviously, it's targeted at product owners, application owners who are accountable for one or more services throughout the entire life cycle of delivering technology services, plan, build, run, optimize. And then to validate the value of that investment, we've added another new feature, which is on the next slide, and it's called the ITSM Success Dashboard. Now, this is an interactive dashboard where you can easily communicate and present insights to execs, senior levels, etc., with this dashboard that shows the value and all the qualitative KPIs. Um, this success dashboard has drill down capabilities so that you can quickly pull the data and present it in an easy to consume format that shows how your deployment is, is, is behaving. And we've got some top level primary indicators here like self-solve, call deflection, request efficiency, prediction accuracy. And what we'd like to hear from you is tell us what other primary indicators would you like to see? This is version one the success dashboard, brand new, so that you can easily communicate and present those insights. As we evolve our product roadmap, we'd love to hear from our customers to say, how can this work better? What other primary indicators would you like us to build into the core product? Next up, process optimization. It's a new feature that we launched in our Quebec release back in the um, beginning of last year, and we've, we've taken it further because it's great at providing a visual on process inefficiencies and their location. But how can organizations identify root cause of undesired process behavior? Or on the flip side, identify opportunities for greater automation. So you can use things like root cause analysis to find hidden connections, influencing factors, data, et cetera. And identifying automation opportunities easily, this gives again a holistic overview because all your data is in the CMDB, and hopefully based on our predictive, our prescriptive guidance, that is our common services data model, by building this from the ground up and having all of your people, processes, technology, configuration items, all mapped on that single data model, single platform, it gives us such an advantage. We can literally take that process, we can mine that data from within ServiceNow. We can also partner, you may have seen in the industry press, we've partnered with Salonis to mine process data from data sources outside ServiceNow. And by mining all that process data, presenting it in this process optimization dashboard, it just means that you know app owners, product owners who are accountable for services means we can be continually improving and planning performance and manage of all of the processes associated across the entire business. Um, just a couple more slides from me and then I'm gonna hand over to Greg. So Virtual Agent, it, it's our leading enterprise chatbot and providing pre-built conversations. You can download content packs from the store to deploy and easily configure these conversations. And we also provide white glove service in deploying these conversations through our partners like DX Sherpa, who are very experienced in this technology and helping you deploy this so you can get fast value um, from your investment with Virtual Agent. And in the San Diego release, what we've added is a brand new admin console to manage the chatbot configuration. It's, it's completely new and it helps you group and organize um, outcomes and oriented tasks to find, apply and update those virtual agent configurations. Um, and we continue to release ready-made topics via the ServiceNow store. To date, there are 65 pre-built topics for IT 
that are out of box from our content pack. So make sure you're familiar um, with these content, um, the conversations, because it's really going to help. Um, and then, you know, just wrapping up the next slide, Greg, before I hand to you, is what we'd like to hear from our customers um, and from people who are working with us with the Exherpa is four key questions. The first one is, uh, you know, how are you looking at user experience within your organization? Secondly, how are you using AI and machine learning technology to enhance and measure that employee experience? And we're hearing a lot about autonomous, agile teams, lines of business, building software. What's your point of view on these decentralized teams? You know, what governance have you got? Um, are vendors like ServiceNow, um, are we helping or are we being a roadblock? And finally, just taking a step back and saying, how have things changed for you and your organization since the pandemic started in March 2020, nearly two years ago? You know, how can we help you and what can we do to help? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. With that, I'm going to hand over Greg. You're going to walk us through a great use case. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Um, excellent content. And uh, so, yeah, it, at this point, I'm going to go through a actual customer use case, a DX Sherpa customer of ours. Um, talk a little bit about this client. Um, so the client is a worldwide market leader in reciprocating compressor systems. And uh, really, they're, they're one of the only manufacturers that actually cover uh, the full range of uh, reciprocating compressor technologies and services. And so what do they focus on and what what is you know what are these systems uh you know where, where's the value and where what industries are, are they uh, useful in and really their their main customer is upstream oil and gas gas transport and storage refinery um, chemical petrochemical and industrial gas uh, sector so you know they are a leader in uh this portfolio of compressor components uh, they have a full range of services to help their customers. Uh, they're a worldwide provider of these systems, and they've been in business since 1844. So they have a very highly skilled uh, workforce uh, to provide these solutions uh, to these industries. So um, we they came to us. Uh, we reached out to them actually, and uh, you know, obviously they were facing some business challenges. Uh, there were really three areas. That, uh, that they were challenged in. And the first was uh, how they did service in incident requests. Um, they were also very siloed. And so as a result, the IT was really, you know, they wanted IT to be viewed as a, a partner versus a profit or a cost center, uh, which we see in a lot of industries, right? And uh, really in focusing a little bit further on these challenges, you know, in the aspect of service in incident requests, um, you know, they really lacked the CMDB, and so it was very, uh, you know, restricted, and the technical teams were really challenged in understanding the impact of change, uh, being able to understand incidents, uh, you know, how they were impacting their various IT services that they were not only providing to, to IT itself, but to their end users. And so, in addition to that, they were very siloed. Everybody had tools, they used their tools, but there was no real centralized tracking system. And so it was really difficult to track these IT services and the hardware systems that supported them. So uh, once again, you know, IT, being IT was very siloed, um, you know, they were very challenged and very reactive. So, you know, uh, the last component, you know, part of the challenge is, you know, how do we make IT a partner? And so, you know, if you're very reactive in your work and you're very siloed, Right. Um, you know, the view of IT was more as a, like you say, a profit center or, uh, you know, a cost center. There were very reactive, very operational activities were being focused on. So uh, once again, they really wanted to become a little more proactive in how they supported their customers. Um, and so they began to go down this course of finding a solution that's going to help them overcome these challenges that they were facing. And, you know, one of the big things that they were doing, and we see this with a lot of customers, is use of Excel, right? Um, Excel is a very powerful tool. And, uh, but, the, you know, the challenge they had was they had a lot of spreadsheets. They had a ton of data as they continued to grow their systems. 
these uh, spreadsheets became huge. I mean, they just had so much data uh, that it was very, very exhaustive in trying to mine this data and look through this data just with Excel spreadsheets. So they knew they had to make a change. They knew they had to do this digital transformation. Um, so, you know, they began to go down the road of uh, evaluating various vendors and various tools. Obviously, there's a lot of research involved with this. Uh, the evaluation process, you know, took, took a, a fair amount of time. They had to go through demos. Obviously, we were, uh, you know, a part of this as a ServiceNow partner. Uh, so they had to really go and make, you know, go through these processes to make that informed decision and determine what was the best tool to assist them, you know, with this, uh, with their challenges. And so ultimately, they chose ServiceNow. And um, so, you know, we began the process and, you know, part of the reasons why, right, as Damien had mentioned some of his early, earlier slides, right, the, uh, the whole concept of the common platform. Um, you know, and so not only just ITSM, but they, they understood as their business grew, and we'll talk a little bit about it later in this, um, being able to add on additional services and having that common view, uh, not only from an IT perspective, but say from an HR perspective or from a customer service perspective, um, that platform and the power of that platform allows them to have sort of a seamless look uh, across their uh, landscape and also all of the automation and the AI that's built in, inside of that uh, allows it to be very seamless regardless of whether it was an HR person or an IT person or a customer. Um, you know, that common uh, platform allowed them and provided the value uh, that, uh, that to kind of have that seamless look in into their uh, business. So that was really the reason they chose ServiceNow uh, from that perspective. And so, you know, we began to go through the implementation process. Obviously, they chose us as the partner to implement uh, the ServiceNow uh, platform. And so we kind of took an approach and, and sort of a phase approach in far, as far as how we did this. And so we focused first on incident management. Um, so leveraging the service now incident management um, component and uh, really it allowed the users to connect you know, with IT through a, a web service channel. Uh, they were also able to do kind of an in-mail self-service ticket generation uh, you know, to being able to more effectively, uh, you know, uh, uh, generate tickets. Uh, and, and so they were able to look at essentially three areas, uh, you know, of value or benefit, right? Transition of KPI, a uh, guided setup and dashboard. So we'll talk a little bit here on the next slide uh, with regards to this. So really the transition of KPI, the benefit for that, is it allowed the users to go in and as they were looking at and filling out an incident uh, through the service portal, um, you know, they were able to gain and look at knowledge base articles. So it allowed them to essentially resolve, resolve issues in a lot of instances on their own because as they began to, you know, fill out that incident, uh, you know, these knowledge base articles allowed them to gain additional information so that uh, you know, they may not have even had to involve IT uh, in this process. They were able to, to fix things on their own. Um, so as this implementation continued, the concept of guided uh, setup really allowed them to gauge the implementation you know, progress. So looking at visual status checks, uh, you know, building the expertise, you know, really being able to configure things to the fullest you know, potential. So ServiceNow, you know, uh, obviously we serve many industries in that, but it, you know, the platform allows the, the you as a customer to really you know, get, get the tool specific to what your needs are, right? And so uh, that's the value of where the AI and, and everything come into play. So uh, really you know, allowing them to configure the, the, the ServiceNow tool to their, its fullest potential to serve their business. And so in addition to that, the dashboards were another area uh, of, of key benefits. So, you know, having these role-based dashboards, whether it was an IT department, 
uh, whether it was an end user or an end customer, uh, really looking at service improvement and identifying potential training opportunities. Um, and then in addition to that, being able to look at trends. So ServiceNow's performance analytics allow them to be able to look at time-based trends uh, specific to, once again, the role or, or the, the actual, uh, you know, whether it's an IT in, individual or end customer, they had those role-based views. So really, initially, the, the gained advantage was they were, you know, in about an 80, 84% uptime, 87% issue resolution. So that was just phase one. So we began this process and continued it down the road. In addition to incident management, we began to look at standing up problem management, knowledge management, change management. Uh, there's account finance module. And then um, they further focused upon asset management. So that'll be the last part that we talk about. Uh, that essentially, that was the last uh, last phase of the of the implementation project. <clears throat> so we focus then on problem management. So really, what what the the value that it gained for them is being able to get sort of in front of issues as they occurred. Um, you know, there's a structured workflow that allows you to go in and quickly uh, do root cause analysis, fix problems. Right, but ServiceNow also empowers you and allows you to, the ability to eliminate these recurring incidents and also get in front of things. So if these recurring incidents happen, the intelligence of the platform really would allow them to be able to, you know, essentially, you know, head off these incidents before they actually happen. So, um, you know, really the key benefits for this is to eliminate first off the, the recurring tickets um, and then also minimize those service disruptions, uh, speed up the restoration of these services via either through automation or you know, self-service type scenarios, and then also accelerate the root cause. So reduce the mean time to repair was another area that problem management was really allowing them to gain additional benefit. So the next part of this was knowledge management. And so we implemented it in two uh, essential phases or two parts. So first we focus on knowledge management as it related to IT. And then we also focus on knowledge management to actually increase the self-service rates for the customers and the employees. And so we're really looking at boosting agent productivity, having that contextual knowledge, and then leveraging the machine learning to further uh, you know, optimize that whole process. So um, really the benefits that were gained is in a lot of instances, customers were able to come in and really educate themselves. Uh, so you know, little, minimize the, the, the actual, you know, uh, the, the client being able to have to go in and, and work with these you know, customers ongoing, they were able to go in and, and educate themselves in a lot of these instances. Um, and as they onboarded customers, that process became, you know, much quicker, much more efficient. Uh, the new joiners were better equipped, so the information that they had in that whole process was streamlined. So really, it increased the user satisfaction. And then the, the other thing that it did is promoted the knowledge sharing between these customers. So um, you know, that's kind of where the knowledge management portion of things really added some some great value. And then lastly, we began to look at change and release management. And so being able to gain control of the IT uh, change process from creation to approval. So really being able to minimize that change impact. So when something did change, they had the understanding to understand the risk of that change. And then also if there were any potential scheduling conflicts. So the benefits from this component was being able to really, you know, uh, understand this change process across IT, manage those concurrent changes, and then also understand and track that proposed change as it as they move through the process. So really, what ended up happening as a result of all of this being pulled together in this next phase was they they were at a 97% uptime and 98% of their issues were, were resolved. So it was a huge gain into where they were before they 
engage service now into where they currently are. So uh, a huge value uh, for them as a customer and has really helped their business along the way. We, then we talked a little bit about financials. So the IT product budget management component of things. So being able to look at budget allocation, approvals, right? They were able to control a lot of expenditure expenditures that they had, being able to sort of prioritize projects and then also understand and be able to license new tools. Um, and then the change management portion of it from a financial standpoint, they were able to look at things like operational cost analysis, CapEx analysis, understanding things like human, util, you know, our utilizations as far as people working on specific things, what was the cost of that, and then also having that transparency across all of these uh, specific areas that were originally silos, right? So now that transparency was in place. And so finally, the final phase of this was uh, kind of adding additional value to the current asset management that, that, is, that is a part of the ServiceNow uh, platform, but being able to add what, what we call as software asset management. So we were able to plug that in on top of things. So really being able to understand uh, and gain role-based dashboards, being able to look at things like inventory management, and then also being able to have a better understanding of license management. So really those benefits, the centralized uh, repository, they were able to really gain some transparency and have those role-based dashboards at their disposal. And then also from an in inventory management perspective, they were able to look at things by you know, looking at stockroom inventory, being able to understand hardware and any kind of consumable assets, and then even be able to understand are these physical or logical uh, stockroom hierarchies. And then finally, the license management component of it. And this is really where it's got a fantastic ROI uh, in being able to look at things like license compliance and things like that. Many of you may have had to deal with a, uh, you know, a, a license audit, right? Um, that process can be very costly at, in, at times and very, very um, cumbersome. Uh, so having the ability to review license compliant and optimize uh, software spend and things like that really allowed them to uh, gain a huge value and, and, and really a, a fantastic ROI um, to, to further understand what their software spend was. So really, you know, the, the you know, looking at about a 92% success ratio. So, you know, as as far as when you think about licensing and everything like that, um, you know, it, it, there there's a ton of, you know, packages and things like that 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 you're constantly dealing with, and we see a lot of customers using Excel spreadsheets to do these types of things. They're able to really eliminate that. So once again, um, you know, it was a huge gained advantage that they were able to see. Um, moving forward. So really, you know, once again, that is the beauty of ServiceNow, why this company chose ServiceNow was beyond just ITSM, it, it truly is a platform that can drive your business uh, moving forward. So uh, with that, um, if there are, I'm going to, I will kind of run through the question and answers. We do have a few here. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get to every one of them, but if there are questions or if you need any more information, feel free to contact us once again, info at dx, dxsherpa.com, or you can visit our website at www.dxsherpa.com. And I would like to thank everybody for taking the time out of your day uh, to, to spend time with us. And Damien, thanks. Thank you for delivering some fantastic uh, content. Um, I do see there is a question. Um, and uh, so the, there's a question regarding uh, the correlation between AI, ITSM, and ITOM. So it, the question was asked, are these components intertwined? Uh, Damien, do you want to take that? They absolutely are. If you think about going back to the map of the platform, you know, the, the ServiceNow platform, the premise is that we have one data model, the CMDB, 
you know, mapped to our common services data model and that all of the shared set of intelligence maps to that CMDB. So that's the benefit of having the now platform with predictive intelligence baked into the platform. So all of the AI goodness, that's the routing and the categorizing of the incident tickets. It's things like predicting recommendations, next steps, being able to cluster data together to, to group it and, and, and use that data to identify automation use cases. That gets mapped to the workflows that we build on top of the platform. And you think about like ITSM, we group the ITSM workflows to map to industry practices like ITIL, incident problem and change. And with ITOM, we use things like discovery and, and service mapping. So all, AI is all linked together. I hope, I hope that answers that correlation there. And then um, there, actually, this is kind of a cool one. So the, the, the ask was, uh, does a user or agent know that they're interacting with AI technologies and not a person? Well, again, I'd, I'd say yes. Of course, it depends how you deploy it, right? But yeah. um, does anyone remember the Microsoft paperclip back from the, like, the, the early 90s? And the, the paperclip used to pop up and it'd say, hey, it looks like you're trying to write a new Word document. And the first thing you would do would be click X on that to get rid of that paperclip because you knew it wasn't a human being. Well, I think mindsets have changed. People expect to be able to automate you know, self-service now. And if they see the benefit of interacting with a non-human chatbot because it gives them an instant response, people are less afraid of that technology. Now, as long as it's branded correctly, I think it's pretty obvious when you're talking to a virtual agent. And of course, the ability to transfer that conversation to a live human agent it exists out of box within the configuration. It just depends how you deploy it. Um, so with that, I, I mean, there are other questions and I believe we're from a timing perspective, we might be running a couple of minutes over. Um, so I think what we'll do is, uh, once again, if there, you know, if, if you do have other questions or what have you, you know, we, by all means, you know, email it to us at the email address on the, on the screen here. And then, um, you know, we can reach out to you individually. Also, uh, there are some other questions that we can, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and follow up from there. But once again, from, uh, you know, we're, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And um, like, once again, we're here to, to help out. And uh, Damien, thanks a lot for your time. And uh, thanks, we appreciate it. And uh, like to wish everybody a, a good day and uh, look forward to talking with you here in the future. Thanks. Thank you.